Hey everyone! Now in this video we're going to do a little bit of math. How exciting, right? Now in Formula One, cooling is a very important thing, so I'm going to be talking about radiators and a technique used not only in Formula One but in a lot of racing to maximize the surface area of the radiator yet minimize the frontal surface area of the car. Now why would you want to do this? Well, you want the maximum surface area you can get on your radiator so that you can have the maximum cooling. Obviously a bigger radiator with more air passing through it is going to do more cooling than a radiator with a smaller surface area. But if you have a large radiator, that's creating large frontal surface area. So that's going to be, mean more drag on the car, which you don't want. So how do you optimize the two? Reduce drag and increase surface area of the radiator. Well, it's a pretty simple technique, and I'm going to do a very basic example. Um, the way they do it in Formula 1 will be sw slightly different, but it just involves the, the same geometry principles. So, here we've got a radiator, and one thing you might be thinking is, well, why not just make the radiator deeper? Well, the problem with that is, is if, say, you have a really deep radiator with air passing through the whole way, that air is going to heat up as it travels through the radiator. So by the end of it, it may be a very high temperature, and you're not going to be pulling out any additional heat from that radiator. So you want it to be thin and wide. That's ideal. So here we have a radiator. It's 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters by 10 centimeters. And let's just say it's in the side pod of a Formula One car. Uh, so, you've got a frontal surface area there of 20 squared, so 400 centimeters squared, right? Very simple. Now, how can you increase the surface area of that radiator without in increasing the frontal surface area of the car? Well, if you just tilt it forward but maintain the same height. So, here we have that happening. So, it's the exact same height. In fact, all four corners will line up to all four corners on this. You've just tilted this radiator forward. So you've still got 20 there, and then we've got a 60-degree uh, angle that this uh, radiator has been tilted. So we want to find out what this length is, this x right here. So we know that x times cosine of 30 is equal to 20. Sokotoa, right? One of those basic geomet geometry things you learn. Uh, Sokotoa. So for uh, cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse uh, is equal to uh, the cosine of that angle. So x cosine 30 is equal to 20. So x equals 20 divided by the cosine of 30, which happens to be about 23 centimeters. All right, so now we've increased that this length here to 23 centimeters, and so now you've got 23 times 20 rather than uh, 20 squared. So you've got a bigger surface area, you've got an increase there. Now let's just uh, take another one, um, and so we've got x cosine of 45 here, and that is equal also to 20, that uh, height there. And so then here you would get a length of 28 centimeters. So that's going to be this distance here is going to be 28. All right, so now you've got 28 times 20 for that surface area of the radiator without changing the frontal surface area. All right, that's pretty key. So remember, it's the same height and all the four corners still line up. All right. So now we want to take it one step further. We've got it leaning forward, but we can also move uh, one of the sides forward. So we take this side here and we shift it forward. Let's do the same degree here. So this one was tilted at a 60 degree angle. Let's tilt this one at a 60 degree angle. So remember, this part here is going to move forward this part here is going to remain stationary. So you're just shifting that side forward and you're going to increase the top length. So you do the same math with that uh, length there and you've got 23 cosine, um, or no, I'm sorry, you've got x cosine 30 is equal to 20 and then you determine that top length to be 23. So now you've got 23 centimeters by 23 centimeters with the same frontal surface area as you had originally 
But now the surface area of the radiator is 23 squared, so 529 uh, centimeters squared, a 33% increase in surface area without increasing your drag. So let's, uh, let's take it for this next example here where we've got uh, the 45 degree angle. So once again, you'll have 28 by 28 now rather than 28 by 20 on top. So 28 squared, if you actually uh, do the math on this, it's 28 point something and it comes out to 800. So you've doubled the surface area of the radiator without changing the frontal surface area of the car. That's important. So remember, all four corners on each of these line up. So it's the same frontal surface area. And I'll explain this in, in greater detail. So let's say you take it even a step further and you've, you put this at a uh, 30 degree angle here. So you've got x cosine 60 equals 20. So then you're going to come up with 40 centimeters for this distance here. That's going to become 40 centimeters. So when you do the second uh, shift, you're going to have 40 by 40, 40 squared, 800. So you can quadruple the surface area of the front of that radiator without changing the surface area of the uh, frontal surface area. So this may be a tad bit confusing, so I've got this uh, very incredible expensive engineering tool here. It is a rubber band. And hopefully I can explain this a little better using this rubber band. So here's where we started at. We had a 10 by 10 uh, radiator, this little square here, or I'm sorry, 20 by 20. Then we pull it back on the bottom. So you can see I pulled that back with my, with my thumbs. But so now you've got a rectangle. Whereas before it was a square, just like that. You pull it back, you've got that rectangle when I turn it like that. Now we want to shift one of these sides back. So we shift that back, and then as I turn that to you, you can see that it's now a, a larger square than we had before. But the way it's oriented is like that, so it still looks like a square. So we start with this, pull it back, and then pull that back. So to you, that still looks like a square. But to me, you can see that it's more like a parallelogram when viewed from a different angle. So what you're doing is increasing the surface area of the radiator without increasing the frontal surface area of the car. I know I've said that a thousand times at this point, but it's a pretty interesting concept and it's a great way to improve the cooling of a car without increasing your drag very much. So that is a technique used in Formula One. And of course, they're not just going to have squares. I mean, they're going to fit it around their components so that it works out for the car. But they will use them at angles to maximize the surface area. So I hope you enjoyed this, and that's all for this video.